adding daily five reading centers to an existing curriculum. Have you thought about adding center time to your reading block, but you're really not sure how you're supposed to accomplish it, especially when you're supposed to have tier one instruction, whole group instruction, and you're just so confused. Maybe you listened to Sold the Story and you're just like, whoa, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, I have good news for you in this video because I have a way of doing this and combining both whole group instruction with small group instruction, which is what the daily five method is all about. So stay tuned to the end because you're going to love all of my tips and you're going to feel very successful heading into the winter trimester of the school year, which we all know we have to reteach so many things during this time because our students forget everything over winter break. So just remember that daily five is the structure of your literacy block, not the instruction. I mentioned before that I um, sold a story. I just finished listening to it and it had my brain really thinking. And then of course I was on TikTok and I saw a bunch of videos of people talking about how whole group instruction is the only way to go. And I really do think it just depends on what kind of teacher you want to be. I don't think there's a right or wrong. So I'm not trying to get into a debate about that. But I do both methods in my classroom. And so maybe you want to try that as well, or you want to take one or the other, but hopefully this video will help you. So again, daily five is the structure, not the instruction. So my first tip is if you're going to start introducing daily five centers with your existing curriculum is to just introduce one station at a time. And I, of course, have different posters that I use in my classroom and I go over the rules for each station with my students. I have all of those inside of my TPT store and you can grab them and use them or you can make your own on chart paper. It just depends on what you like the look to be. So one at a time, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't overwhelm your students either. OK, so you can also teach in small groups using your existing curriculum. Let's say you have three small groups. I'm just, just depends on how many you have. I have more than that. I have a bigger class, but maybe you wanna take that whole group instruction and teach it three times. You could do that. Or you could do what I do and teach whole group for the, the lesson for the curriculum that I'm teaching and then have daily five reading groups after that. The main thing I notice with teachers who say that they're so against small groups is that they're still pulling small groups because all of your students, yes, they need to be exposed to that title, title, <laughs> tier one inter intervention, let's say, getting all that exposed to it. But we know that they're all not functioning at the same level. So to say that you can just teach the whole group and not pull small groups over, I just don't see how that that's best practices for kids. Just my opinion. Um, but I think most teachers that are teaching in whole group and stand by whole group are also pulling small groups. That's what I've noticed them say, and they're pulling kids over that need extra help. I have had kids in my class at so many different levels, and it's just really hard to effectively teach everybody in a whole group setting. And that's why daily five is so great, because then you can pull them for those smaller groups where they can feel more confident. And if you go back and watch any of my daily five videos, I have a whole playlist on how to get started and how to do different activities. So watch those. But I also also have the same videos for math daily three and I said in one of those videos that my students have their confidence has soared since I started doing math in small group and I do teach the same lesson three times and I saw some other teachers saying like who would want to teach the lesson that many times but that's what middle school high school teachers have to do and honestly sometimes you have to repeat a lesson and I've had students who were in the first lesson say can I come back and watch you reteach it it's a great opportunity to help everybody learn at their own pace. All right, so you can teach in small groups using the curriculum, or you can teach whole group and then teach in small groups after that, working on specific skills that those kids need to work on. It's kind of up to you. I'd love to know in the comments what your preferred method of teaching is. And if you'd know a teacher that this video would help and help them decide what they're doing, especially if they're a newer teacher, then please share it with them. And um, if you are also, trying to figure out how you're going to run your literacy block, what it should look like, what steps should you put in place, you can grab my free 10 step guide and I'll put it in the description box below. It'll walk you through the first 10 things you need to do to set up a successful literacy block, things I wish I would have done from day one and I had to learn the hard way so that you don't have to. All right, go ahead and give this video a like if you found it helpful. And again, tell me in the comments below how you teach literacy. I'm always looking to grow myself as an educator. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.